Hello, hello, hello everyone, and welcome back, 2024. So I'd like to welcome you to the first show of the year, and I'd like to welcome our, my incredible co-host. We have the Laura Quickie Massey. Hello, Laura. <laughs> hi, Dale. Hi, hello, everybody, and hi, Sean. It's really, really, really good to be here. Beautiful. Good to see you, sister. And we have the Sean Bibby Meister. Hello, Sean. Hey ho. Good to see you two guys too. How are you doing, Sean? How's your new year going so far? Oh, uh, it's going nice. It's like nice and rainy outside. It was snowing <laughs> earlier. But uh it's a good way to start the new year. Beautiful. And so everyone watching as well in the chat, how was your new year? How was your Christmas? How did it go? And we have he's a hairless cat. I think Andrew in the chat as well. <laughs> so Andrew is currently flying over. He's coming over to the UK for our combined week. Um, so yeah, a lot of exciting things coming up as well. Uh, so we're going to be doing a winging it show today. We were all trying to come up with ideas for the show and we're like, you know what? We're just going to be in the moment and we're going to fly on the eagle wings. So Miss Massey, where can these eagle wings take us? What direction are we going? North, south, east, west? Where are we going? Wow, all those potentials. And I love the fact you use the compass for that because that takes us right back to the teachings, doesn't it? And the question is this year, how can we present not just Andrew's material, but our own material and what we've learned and our experiences? How can we best present them to people to help them learn, to make them, to make these very um, inclusive? show so people can join in and 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 everybody learn the teachings and there is so much potential out there to do that and I think it's just up up to us I mean the three here and and anyone else out there who's who's been doing the these teachings and and getting the wisdom and learning and continuing to grow and evolve to look at how they can not only help themselves grow but how we can best get this across to people to help people heal at the end of the day, to help them release their trauma. That's only part of it, isn't it? We want to be getting ourselves well in that natural earth energies um, more out the system. And I just think this is such an exciting year, not just for the Galactic Historian team and the Talking Stick show and, and all the people involved in that, but for everybody. And then we all have choices and we all have you know, all those potentials there. And what are we going to make of them? What are we going to do with that? Wonderful, Laura. And a question for you. So you've been doing shows for over a year now and the change in you has been absolutely incredible and I put my hat off to you. What has it been like for you coming into the show and doing so many shows last year? What's it like for you on that journey? That was quite a tough, <laughs> a tough journey in some ways because... Um, a lot of people re will remember the Hugger Karen show. <laughs> a, few, a few bloomers that this this baby boomer has um, <laughs> put out there along the way. But you know what? If you can if you can put yourself up there and you don't mind being knocked down and you can laugh at yourself, um, and it can be it, it's it's non spiritual too. It doesn't all have to be spiritual. It doesn't all have to be heavy, as we were saying. It's about living life on Earth now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just swearing at Andrew's point. Covered it. Saying he's a 12 year old hosting the show. <laughs> yeah, the man, the man without the beard. <laughs> so yes, everyone, I am colder. It is winter and quite cold here. And if you haven't seen, the beard has disappeared. So, yeah, <laughs> I am beardless. Yes. <laughs> a, new, a new start for me, some new growth coming in. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, absolutely. That's what this, this year and another year. Uh, remember, Andrew wrote in the front of my Living the Life Mystical book, he wrote, Grow with New Understanding. And every year that takes on another meaning for me. Because if you've got new understanding and you've got new wisdom, you've got to grow with it. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah? And yeah. this is the same kind of like pendulum, what happens over and over again with a lot of people, say muggles or whoever, 
is they go through the new year, have um, resolutions, changes they want to make, but they don't actually make internal changes with themselves. And that's how important this journey is, that each year you should be growing, you should be putting more time and energy and effort into who you are, you should be having fun as well. And one of the biggest growths for me was learning to be human again, how I can be a human and actually have fun. I can be in my body, learn more grounding skills, connect to people who are muggles and enjoy time with them as well. So, Sean, I'm going to bring you in. How was your year for you, brother? How was 2023? 2023? <laughs> it's like, holy crap, man. It was just so many changes happened in 2023. Like the, the evolution ball got rolling. Not all of it easy. A lot of the things took effort and skill and non-mystical courage, you know. But here we are in 2024 now. And it's just like, okay, time to do it all over again <laughs> and have even more fun this time. So what are some of the things you've learned in the last year? Because I know you're growing, especially with your business. You've got your own place. From me meeting you a few years ago to where you are now, it's such a different story and inspiring. So what has it been like for you opening that business and taking that leap of faith? Because a lot of people do need that leap of faith and actually the courage to make the steps to change or owning their own business. So what are some of the inspiration you can give people who are wanting to come out of that, say, stuck in the mud energy? Right. Well, persistence is key. And the wanting to just kind of keep growing, like you said in the beginning, because like, like, like a lot of people, I was stuck in my own spiritual rut for a long time. And it was all the galactic news or, you know, the next politic thing that would come out, the next big list of thing that was coming out, whatever it is, that would steal, it just steals so much of your attention. Like each time, like if, if it's not chunks of months, sometimes it's just chunks of 30 minutes at a time that it steals away from you. And then taking all that and redirecting it into something constructive. And then I've been finding that the changes happen even quicker. Like all the no time that we talk about when we try to practice, it starts to happen. And then all of a sudden these big shifts just run and they're really nice. They get you excited for 2024. <laughs> there we go. The great 2024. Here we are. So we have Arcee just joined in as well. Arcee, are you there? I am here. It sounds like you've still got Christmas tunes on in the background or something there. I thought you, you were coming in on Sabbath exactly. Slay. Like, what on earth is that? <laughs> There's somebody else in okay. there, Joe. We have some music playing in the background. so <laughs> Unless it's our producer. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. It's coming from Arcee. Okay. Hey, Arcee. There Musical we go. Okay, Arcee. Very good. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed. Uh... Yes, Joel. I came with my own music. How about that? <laughs> it always happened that way, didn't it? Even when we were in Scotland. <laughs> It's just the way you make your entrance, Arcee. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and now that I have managed to um, create um, hearing issues for Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blew out his headphone, according to the chat. <laughs> how are you, Arcee? Yeah, so, how, how has 2023 been for you as a year? So far, it's been great. I've been enjoying the rain. Same. It feels like it's every day here, but it's not. It's it's a, about a couple of two, three times um, a week. Yeah. Which is good. I'm not complaining. That's why it's green here. That's why I came. Beautiful. And so what has a move been like? Because it is a big transition moving house. I've just moved mm -hmm. myself. What has it been like for you kind of like settling in? And I know that you're wanting to open a center as well. So how are things on that front? Um, 
Well, the drive was awesome, really. I really wish I had more time to uh, enjoy the different states, um, the different cities. There's just so much to see. I can understand now why people get RVs and drive around their countries because there's just so much to do. I really enjoyed the drive. It was like connecting to nature in a different way. Um, so the drive was awesome. Uh, settling in here, it's it's not bad. It's, uh, you know, a new place, meeting new people. Um, it's cold for me. I'm from the West Coast. So uh, 50 is freezing. <laughs> Can you tell everyone where you drove from and where you drove to, RC? Sure. I went from Scottsdale, Arizona to Charlottesville, Virginia. So I went actually from the West Coast to the East Coast. It was 2,200 miles. I don't know how many kilometers it is. I think in Canada you do kilometers. And did you drive over or did you get an airplane? I drove. I drove with my dogs. Yes. I know Americans like to drive for like days. I remember Andrew saying about this. Um, so we're so used to driving like five hours is a big thing. But in America, yes. like 10 hours is just a small journey. Yes. <laughs> and like two days is just like a, a regular journey. So. Yes. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, it was, uh, it was not easy driving by myself. Having, you know, there's nobody to trade off. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was doing all all the driving by myself. So that was that was hard. But you grew from it because I did grow. Yes, because traveling yes. on your own is a huge experience in itself. <clears throat> yes, me. like like holidaying on your own. Exactly, yeah. and I kind of wish that I could have been on the road longer. Mm -hmm. It's a nice well, you feeling. Can get yeah. back on the road. You could get back on the road and and holiday like that, couldn't you? Like a little camper van or something, I suppose. I can, yes. You, think yes. you could drive up to Canada. I, uh, I could. <laughs> I, just... I could come and visit you. Probably like 10 hours. <laughs> Probably 15. more. 15? Yeah. And further south. Mm. Virginia is further south, so it'll probably be a little bit more. It's not the easiest thing to do with two senior dogs. No. So what did you learn from that, do you think, Arcee, that, that lone trip? I learned that how, how much I personally need nature and how I did the right thing by the move, by this move. Mm -hmm how much more I can easier I can connect to myself. Did you learn how much more capable you are than you thought? Um, yes, with, with each journey. Yes. I'm driving from Mexico to Phoenix, uh, 20, that was another 2,100 miles. Mm -hmm. That was hard with the two dogs. That was really, really hard because I happened to leave on the day there was a tropical storm. I was just so hoping the storm would be ahead of me, but um, I drove through it. Um, I didn't have cell phone connection for a long time. Um, and it was just me and the dogs. So that was huge growth as well and it's interesting you say that because you do have to reflect back to really because otherwise you just keep going and you're doing and you're not even thinking about i just accomplished something huge yes <laughs> i drove for four days in mexico by myself and came out uh you know safe and sound thank god and many people do but still it's courageous Yes, it is. That's huge. I mean, I thought it was big driving for three weeks on my own in Scotland in a camper van. But going going through Mexico is another thing entirely. So that is amazing, RC. That is that is brilliant. 
And that and that's it. For, like even yeah. for me, so where I've moved, there's a lot more um, nature. There's a lot more woods, forests, and so on. And I was out on a walk last week, and I realised how much I needed nature uh, to feel inspired again because I felt like I did. I didn't disconnect from it. Those are the wrong words, but I was so busy last towards the end of last year. I didn't really have time to actually relax my mind so much that I can actually be in nature. I used to go on walks and stuff, but because I was so busy, I'm like, right, I'm going to go out and actually listen to nature now and, and slow down my mind, start being really relaxed. I've gone through a divorce. Um, so nature inspires us, Arcee, doesn't it? It really does. And once you do connect, don't you see, notice that you're seeing all the little things. Like I see the smallest bird nest mm -hmm. now. Uh, you're just connecting more and more and deeper and in different levels. And that's it. And it's like connecting to a nothingness, isn't it, guys? There's like you go into no time and you go into a field yeah. of actually where you're not expecting, you're not judging, you're not trying to see something. You're just simply listening, breathing. And that energy is, is really, really needed at the moment, especially for people who deal with high stress. Uh, and for me, I was going through a lot of stress myself. So I've been going back to the basics of getting out there, going into nature. And I feel so inspired from doing it. Sean, I'm going to bring you in. How does nature inspire you, brother? Oh, it makes it a lot simpler, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. Because you know, it, it literally does have that frequency, that natural frequency that we're all trying to attenuate to. And so I, I love going to the beach, like just go and walk on the boardwalk. Got a little like nature spot nearby that's slowly changing and getting developed. But right now it's like this honorary dog park. And so like, you know, we see dog walkers out there with like 10 dogs sometimes <laughs> and stuff. And it's fun. It's just, I, I personally have to do it sometimes or else I'll get overwhelmed if I don't get out, out of doors and doing something. Beautiful. So we've got a few comments in the chat as well. It's great to hear about how everyone's year has been as well. Put it in the chat. Um, how has it been for you, 2023? What was your New Year's resolution? Um, I know me and Laura, um, Sean as well, and Arcee, we've had a busy year of changes. And for myself, it's always good to look back and see the growth we've had because a lot of people don't really see the growth they've had. And I have to actually look back at myself two years ago to who I am now and there's such inspiration which comes through now. So we're all doing an incredible job. <laughs> well, that's the amazing part about our perspectives. Because now in 2024, we have a new perspective. And now we can take that and go look at all our other perspectives. And start to like, see what the algorithm is between them all. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> that's a good one, but, Sean, yeah. <laughs> so, Sean, why don't you connect back two years ago to the Sean two years ago? What would mm. he be like? What was he going through? 2022. He was a bit spiritually zealous. <laughs> he was wasting way too much time posting stupid pictures of animals and strange things on social media. And he was a bit overwhelmed at the time because that's when I was just full blown learning the new stuff in school. So is just really trying to get the roots down back in 2022. And you know how sometimes when we're trying to get those new roots down and it can be so hard that we get into the distraction, like it's just something to keep us, our mind off of what the struggles that we're going through. And so mine was just a little bit of spiritual zealousness, a little bit of UFO madness and underground base madness. <laughs> so that was me in 2022, but still all going through school and everything at the same time. Wonderful. And, th and that's it for me. It was like that as well was letting go of instant gratification and how important that is. And that's something which has come up in my latest sessions as well for people is, and Andrew says it through years and years and years of shows is that it's important to remember to be human. And that's one of the most important things we can do is be, be, be a better human. So many people want to know about the galactic history or what colors a UFO's asshole or, or anything they want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is we're here to be better humans. We're here to live. We're here to love. And we're here to be balanced as well. 
then we all have our crazies. We meet the crazies as well. I've met a few crazies lately. So yeah, Laura, well, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's wonderful to have that knowledge, but it does go back to what you were saying is what you're going to do with it. Um, yes. You know, there's some questions in the chat from Mike, which are quite um, specialist questions, which we're not dealing with today because we want to keep it away from that and just get into this business of what we're doing with the knowledge that we've got now. What is our... Uh, we've all chosen this mantle of responsibility. Certainly everybody who sat here now and many of you out there have chosen the mantle of responsibility to carry this wisdom forward to the seven future generations, to the future generations. We stepped up, um, you know, some of us quite a long time ago, um, whether it's through Andrew or other learning that we've had, other knowledge that we've gained. And then, as Andrew says, action turns that knowledge into wisdom. And we can hold a lot of wisdom on things. And the time is now, as he's always saying, like, I think one of his isn't the hermits to come out of the mountains. And that's very much what I'm feeling this year, more than I felt before, is we've, we've got this now. We do the practices. We do our daily practice. We have this incredible connection with spirit. And that's not just us here. Many other people do. But how are we going to use that in the future to help other people, to help our brothers and sisters, to bring forward or to feel more the fifth world of peace where all potentials exist for peace? And that's that's something that I'm sure everybody here is aiming for. And again, you know, hats off to everybody who is out there trying to do their great work. And it doesn't matter whether you're you're a hairdresser or, dare I say it, a guru. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Hairdressers are healers. I think everybody who's, who's doing something like that that helps other people is amazing because we're all here as our brothers and sisters to try and help each other along, aren't we? And if you're starting up a business, I think, Arsa, you've got your, is it Quiet Mind? Light yes. Center? You can tell us about yes. that in a minute. That would be fantastic. Um, and Sean doing what he's doing. And I think it's just amazing that so many people are stepping up now and offering their services to help other people and encouraging other people to set up their own services. I just I find that really exciting. Yes, beautiful, Laura. And we have the Andrew in the chat saying, hermits need social skills. And that is very, very true. <laughs> so for, the, for those listening as well, who've been listening for quite a while and who've not done anything, who've not made that change or made that choice to learn something new or get out of their room or go for a meal with someone, have a chat with someone face to face. These are some of the most important skills we have in spirituality is just simple skills, socializing, the amount of people I know who say they're spiritual, but they can't hold a conversation with someone. So there's so much growth to be had and we're having fun. We, put, we always poke fun at things like this, like crazy. We've had crazies in the year 2023 as well. And I've had my fair share of crazy. So as Andrews, um, so it's all about, yeah, just learning, evolving, and remembering that you're human, get yourself out there and speak to people. Sean, how important is it is it to socialise? Because a lot of people have forgotten social skills at all. Step yourself out of spiritual isolation. Because, <laughs> like, one, just socialising is fun. And you get to practice your mastery when you're doing it. You know, you get a, the ability to tell a joke or tell your day. Like, tell tell someone how your day went. Or just something that made you laugh and it's it's pretty unbelievable how much just being social how much it can increase your your um not synchronization synchronicity rate <laughs> gets the synchronicity rate firing because when you're out talking to people and you make it a daily habit things just start happening there's more random stuff that you can, can pop into your field of awareness and it's fun it, it lights the light within you. <laughs> yeah, because because you start, because one, we do the work, you know, what that means. We just work on our self, our self-being and improving ourselves. And then we start to see that in other people a little bit. 
and they see that in themselves and we see ourselves in them and it just gets the ball rolling. I remember um, when I was going through my first divorce, uh, I was really, really sad and depressed and I didn't want to go to work. So finally, like after a week, my boss called me, just come in, just come for a few hours and then you can go home. And I said to her, I said, yeah, that's a good idea. So I, I would trick myself because I knew I wasn't going to. So I would tell myself, go to work until lunchtime. If at lunchtime you want to come home, you'll come home. But by, you know, exactly what you say, Sean, I would go to work and I would start talking to people and I would do my job. And by lunchtime, my whole mood, my whole energy would change. And I knew that I wasn't going to go home. And that's how I got myself to work for a couple of months. <laughs> Just that connection with people changes, changes us. Yes. And yet time and time again, as I've said before, you have to get yourself out there. You have to learn to be, you have to humanize yourself. There's so many people who call themselves spiritual, a spiritual guru, light work or anything like that. But as soon as that light worker speaks to someone, they're rude, obnoxious, up their own ass. Their ego's really, really big. Just some things you've got to be aware of being a human. <laughs> the amount of times I've let, let, met a light worker and, and I've been there myself and you can't have a conversation with them. They've lost all social skills because mm -hmm. they're always in light worker activation mode where everything's a sign, everything's a message and so on and so, so forth. So remembering to poke fun and have that humanness. Yeah, remove that uh, spiritual st um, stick from Spirit your back side. Yeah, we, we should, we should. absolutely. I had to learn. I had to learn that. And understanding um, also why it's there in the first place. And for me, um, it might be the same for others. Sorry. <laughs> Say that again. I said they, they thought it would be fun, the spiritual butt plug. That's why. I said. Maybe spirit thought it would be fun. But yes, for me, it was... Um, uh, it was about earnestness. So um, Andrew told me it was the way I came into spirituality and I had to look at that. And it was about not being heard. And because I wasn't heard, especially in my early days as a light worker, I then went into this real earnestness, this real trying to sell spirituality, spirituality trying to sell um, well, the dong and all the things like that about the currency reset, all those, all those light worker things. I was really trying to push people and be in their face and and post things on Facebook, like Sean was saying earlier. And that is not it. That is not what it's about. But uh, for anyone else doing it now, I do claim that as a rites of passage. Okay, so you can't always just jump into to the wisdom, can you? You learn these things along the way. And I had that serious spiritual stick for a reason, to learn how to remove it, yeah? And to, know, to learn why I needed to remove it. What benefit there would be for me and others if I actually stopped being quite so earnest and heady and um, intense about spirituality and bring some fun into it. So there's great fun within that teaching. And that's one of the things I think Andrew does and has always done is he's brought a lot of fun into the teachings because it makes things easier to learn as well. Beautifully put, yeah. Laura. Definitely. You know what's yeah. kind of fun about that, Laura? It's like that right that rite of passage. Yeah. Like it's just, the point where we we're just like spiritually just pushing everything into people's faces. And, and now we're just practicing like the fishing style where we just put the hook out and it's like, come on, put a dollar bill on it or, you know, whatever yes. it is. But, yeah. but just hooking them. And I and like what you did there. You also took a step back, just so, or you pushed your swivel chair back because it is, it's about sometimes a backward step, not a forward step, but it doesn't mean you're going backwards. It means you're taking more of an overall view, more of the eagle eye, sacred neutral view, looking at things from above, from a great height. Not that you're better than anybody. It's not about levels. It's just about learning. 
and learning to have a broader view of things. And I think that's one thing, you know, we've all done here, many people are doing that, that, that other view, that other perspective. There we go. And, and allowing yourself to have... Let's go ahead, Arcee. Sorry. It's okay. uh, allowing, respecting people at where they are. Yes. And in that way, you're respecting yourself more and you're allowing that to pour out of you and respect others as they are, where they are, as they are, and then just you know, planting seeds. And if they're interested, they'll step forward. Yes. Yeah, very much planting that. seeds. Yeah. Yeah. We Great might respect up. ourselves where we are. Yes. Because you... What is it, Sean? Oh, I was just saying, and as we do that, we might respect ourselves where we are. Yes. And and that is, that's what I believe is you you have to respect yourself first before you respect other people. And that's one of the most important lessons is those false people out there are always promise people the world, but they don't actually respect themselves. Then you, they end up cutting someone up or backstabbing them. Self-responsibility, self-acceptance, self-love is important here. So let's talk about 2024 itself and what's coming up for people. I know um, Andrew just put in the chat about the Miami aliens landing in the mall. <laughs> so there's a sighting of an alien in the Miami mall. If you've not seen this, Type, go on to TikTok, just type in Miami alien. Um, some people saw, I think it was a, a similar situation to Las Vegas. As Andrew was saying, it was the same type of beings. Uh, but they showed themselves in a mall um, in Las Vegas. And all of a sudden, the police came. There was thousands of policemen there. And they actually tried to cover it up and said it was uh, someone lighting fireworks or something. I'm not going to talk about it too much because I don't want to get banned. <laughs> but have a look that up for yourself. So already we've had UFOs, sightings again, things happening. We've had the Epstein stuff going on. So what is in store this year, guys? Should we get our crystal balls out and our light worker balls and have a look? More of that, I think. <clears throat> More of that sort of thing. More things be coming out into the open. Um, more, more, more things being less able to be covered up. Yeah, like when I look at the crystal ball, it's like, what's going to be in this globe and what am I actually going to look at? Because mm. more and more and more, I feel like my grandma, where it's like she just sees something and be like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, an alien in the Miami mall? Oh, that, oh really? That's nice. <laughs> like they put the price of gas up again. Oh, that's nice. Because <laughs> we're going to see it all again. The yeah. same thing that we saw in 2023, but in a little bit different shape and size. Mm. And maybe two or three new things wrapped up slightly <laughs> different. I think I want to adopt that phrase. Oh, that's nice. Oh. <laughs> because if you can like, say that about most things that you're observing, it's actually, it's almost quite neutral, isn't it? Because you're not getting put into any sort of polarity <laughs> about yeah, it. You're so not moaning about it. You're not being a victim of it. It's just, oh, that's nice. It's like, I acknowledge it. It's there. <laughs> well, who's got the time to get into all of it? Because there's so many things happening. And it's like, all this stuff is going to be happening while I'm doing something else. I'm doing my own thing. Yeah. So all this is, and I'll look over my shoulder every once in a while, or Dale will tell me about the my, Miami mall aliens. <laughs> like, and like, it's so easy to get caught up for weeks at a time on one little thing like this, but they're going to just keep happening. Yes. One yeah, after another. Mind like, trails to nowhere, really, in the end, isn't it? It's mind trails to nowhere. And it, well, what is it going to do for your development? It, I don't think it means it's not bury your head in the sand. That's what we're always saying, isn't it? It's yes. being aware of what's going on, but holding your frequency with the Earth's natural frequency. It seems like there's a little echo with all those kind of events because there's always the first event. And then there's this magical buzz about it. And then there starts to be news about the news of the event that comes later. And it slowly just gets whitewashed down. 
and, and the more and more you get into the whitewash, it's just, it's not the same thing that it was in the beginning. <laughs> and, that, and that's it. It's, it's like all of this f stuff about the aliens and all the stuff on the news. Like I, I like to look at it up now and then, but I have my balance where I don't overdo it with what I'm looking into. And I don't become where I'm always looking at the system, always looking at the news to validate something for me that change is going to be here. And that's something I, Andrew said before and something I've learned over the last years is that you're not going to see the change within the news or the media or anything like that. The natural change is going to happen in a natural way. And like even myself um, have been having many deja vus in the dream world, uh, just stuff Andrew said a long time ago, which was going to happen during these events and the process of us coming into 2035 and what that holds for us. Who knows what it holds for us? But they they say 2035 is going to be the age of the golden age. A lot of other people call it different things. But there is something happening. And like Joel said in the chat just then, reminded us uh, that we've gone into a solar maximum early. So the solar flares have been in very on all the time. I think we have about three or four days of a break. Then the solar storms come back in. Um, so solar storms, guys. Those have really been affecting me lately. I've not really. I've started to sleep the last few nights, but last week I couldn't sleep for about four days. Uh, so how how has it been for both of you? And people listening as well, put in the chat. How has the solar storms been for you? Because we've gone into the solar maximum a year early now. We're meant to be in, in a few years' time, not now, but we're in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was the big one around like New Year's time, mm -hmm. like a big X nine five. But it seems to be just affecting the weather here a little bit because Canada's weather, we're getting a really, really warm year and it's kind of nice. It's barely snowed and it's already January 9th. And we, you've got big storms around you, haven't you, Sean, now happening? Usually. You no, know, like the wind was howling something fierce last night. If you had had a few of that a few times, there's something fierce. But well, yeah, it's just I don't know. It's like I've I've been taking the habit of writing the solar like the flares in my journal. Mm -hmm. Just like whenever I go back to my journal, just write down when things came through so you can start to chart it and map it a little bit. So it always comes in in hindsight and foresight, that's for sure. There we go. And the solar storm as well, just allow us to see what's deep within us, which we've not resolved. This is one of the many things the solar storms do for me. It's like, yep, you've got this shit in you still. <laughs> so there's lots of inner work and lots of data to actually be recognized during these solar storms. A lot of people get scared and terrified of them because it brings up their own shit. And you have the light workers who blame it on Uranus's arse and many different moons and Mercury retrograde and stuff like that. But realistically, all of these planets, all of these storms are just showing us what we need to resolve within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it also the, affects the Earth, storm. doesn't it? So I think Joel in the our producer brought up about the the earthquake in Japan, and that's also caused, isn't it, by the solar flares, earthquakes. So I think that, and the earth is shifting and changing a lot, isn't it? I mean, the water's moving. Whenever I've asked Andrew, he's always said the earth is moving her waters because there's areas, because she needs to, she needs to bring her waters to balance and everything to balance. Places need cleansing and so on. Again, it's looking at, at it from a bigger picture, isn't it? Yes. And the other thing, Dale, you know, you mentioned like the golden age. And I would say like, Let's claim our own golden age. We can each create our own golden age whenever we want to, can't we? By yeah, like now, by the by the work we're doing and, and how we're feeling and um you know, creating that algorithm of it of living um living a mystical life daily. <laughs> that's what Andrew would say. <laughs> and that's it and and rem I think remembering like using the word awakening but then realizing it's more of the remembering of how unique every single body is, the remembering of your ancestors, the remembering of where you're from. Uh, and that's what it's been like for me the last few years, just remembering mm. more and more of who I am. Um, 
So what about the remembering then, Sean, is important for those listening because it's for me, learning about my ancestry was very important over the Christmas. Uh, I had a lot of insight about who my grandmothers and grandfathers are. And there's just little nuggets coming out each and, each and every time. There's, I'd say there's definitely different levels of it. Like there can just be the shock of remembering in the beginning, but then it comes in in layers and you start hearing the family stories, how they tie into you, how they shape the family. Like sometimes like you hear a story that happened 60 years ago and you're like, gee, well that fucking explains a lot, doesn't it? (laughs) 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 And you, and you, (laughs) <laughs> but you, you see how it's affected like you know two whole generations and the next grandkids that came out just with like one little tie and then the perspective just switches that gear beautiful rc how are we doing i know you went off how are you getting on yeah i think it's the storm causing oh. some issues the rainstorm here so I was able to get on through my phone and not my computer. So have you noticed anything with the solar flares? Uh, they give me headaches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what people are saying. Yes, yeah. And I, I become more emotional than what I already am. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it wasn't in enough. You, you really need to add to this. <laughs> uh, but there is also, um, and I don't know if it has anything to do with um, the solar flares or not, but there is a, like a clarity that once I let go, I connect to this clarity. Mm-hmm. of you know my own my own life what are the things that going that's happening around me beautiful so i'm not we're quite shifting it's so oh, we're, we're shifting all shifting al- along with everything else sorry rc i didn't mean to no 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 go ahead i was just gonna add to what you were saying is we are all shifting along with everything else because we're connected to the earth and okay. we, we can either shift um <laughs> gracefully sometimes or not <laughs> we'll be shaken up until until it's shaken out of us <laughs> kicking and screaming <laughs> yes, exactly it is isn't it for some people drag kicking and screaming yes obviously affects- that's me oh, sorry laura no i was gonna say it affects everybody one way or another one way or another whether we're aware it. of it or not and going back to the grounding skills and how important they are during these solar storms, uh, exercise, just being in your body, one of the most important things. Um, so if you are feeling a bit scattered during the solar storm, go out for a walk, go for a run. Just allow yourself to start learning to be in the body more because the solar storms are going to kick you out of your body if you're not regularly in your body. So a lot of people have hard times. I know I've had uh, clients who have been messaging me asking for help because their personalities or dickhead parts of them or programs have been kicking off and becoming feral. And it's something I've experienced as well. And it's about <laughs> le- learning the skills of just seeing the parts of you which have grown, like all these programs, all these dickhead parts of us, because mine became feral over Christmas. I had to kick the shit out of it a few times. <laughs> I, had to, I had to give it a taste of its own medicine. So, <laughs> and, and that great show we did about the dickhead cell was so, so good. That was an awesome show. <laughs> With all these storms, they're also a chance for rapid growth potential as they happen. Because it's literally, I think, <laughs> I think Andrew said a bit ago, it's like the sun just splooging all over everyone. I a quote, <laughs> and he's <laughs> loving it. But every time it happens, the storm comes, and it's just a chance to rapidly see something and rapidly expand, depending on the state of where we're at. Yeah, or you could go out and do some ceremony in the storms. Light a fire, bang your drum. Yeah. Add, to the, add, to, add to the 
Anchor some of the potency of those energies. Anchor them to earth with yourself. Why not? You know, I, I think I saw someone share a picture recently of the Northern Lights just taken from just like 30 minutes from here, which is pretty cool. Yes, like even we, just you know, seeing someone take the picture so locally is exciting. Yes, and for us too. There's a couple of times we've seen it much further down in the south than we've seen it before, which is, is exciting. The ancestors are ever more present. Well, one thing that dawned on me is, because it's being in the city, concrete jungle, you know, the air can be a bit polluted and stale. But I feel so grateful living on the lake or near nearby the lake that when the wind starts picking up during some of these storms, the wind just blows in off the lake. And it's just like this giant, not steam cleaner, but this is giant, like one of those fucking chimney things. And like it's blowing the air in. It's just bringing all new air into everywhere. It's so invigorating, new fresh air. Mm -hmm. So, guys, let's get our crystal balls back out. Let's get our light work up balls out. 2024. Get your light work balls out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put my huge, one of my huge balls on this stand here. <laughs> Give it a little rub. So what's going to happen in 2024? What have we got coming in store? So I'm going to throw, Laura, you play with your ball first. What, what's your prediction for 2024? Well, I have said more of the same. And it also, in some ways, it, there's nothing new coming up, particularly, is there? But just more of the same, more revel more, I think, more being exposed, more being revealed. But I can't say what particularly. I don't get a feel for anything particular. I just think there'd be more alien stories. There'd be just more of what we've had before, just more frequently. More balls. Love yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> it's all there in for potential. <laughs> so, Sean, you touch your ball, and what's your prediction? I, I, I carry my spiritual balls with me everywhere I go. <laughs> I, carry, I carry my hindsight and my foresight. <laughs> so, like, who knows? We know. You know, the common ground, there's going to be an election this year. So it's going to just, there's going to be smear campaign after smear campaign after smear campaign. There's going to be a poll from left and a poll from light or right. There's going to be talk about gun control. There's going to be talk, maybe an airplane will go down. We're going to see, you know, more Middle East protests in North America that are just going to be like, brought you know just bickered about what, what it all means like like you said laura we're gonna see more of the alien stuff pop out more government talking about it and everything seems to happen when it's like it's like this spiritual sidestep like everybody's into something and then as soon as something good comes out it just like as soon as some really dirty government conspiracy comes out, they'll just start talking about aliens. And then <laughs> everyone just gets taken out of what they're looking at into the, something else. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, lots of things are going to happen. I like Same that way. spiritual sidestep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I, I mean, like, everyone's in their individual group. And then if everyone just gets sidestepped one group over... You yes. lose all the focus and out the window it goes. <laughs> yeah. RC, what about you? What's happening in your ball? In my crystal ball, um, I kind of agree with Sean and Laura. I, I believe that more new revelations are going to come out about what's been going on, like the Epstein files. And uh, I also have kind of, I feel that no matter what's going on in the outside world, what each of us can do is keep 
our attention and focus on what we want to achieve and move forward towards that. Everything outside is going to always happen. It's going to always continue going on. The question is, can we hold our attention and focus in accomplishing what we want to accomplish? As each and single one of you already have. Well said. Yeah. Go on, Dale. Yeah. Rub your silver ball. Yes. You're dying too. So I've got two balls oh. here. I've got two yeah. light worker balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my prediction is that there's going to be more confusion. There's going to be a lot more people confused, and there's going to be a depression. More people will go into depression. Because you're just going to be looking at the news and you're going to be like, what the fuck is going on now? This is such a shit show. They keep giving me the same shit over and over again, then trying to cover shit, then give me more shit. It's just going to be an absolute shit show. And <laughs> that's my prediction. And for me, obviously, it's about going within, not allowing that to, to kind of like feed off me in any way, shape or form. But just seeing for what it is, it is a clown show. That's all it is. And it's just going to, the more clowns will come on. There'll be another clown here. There'll be another clown there. So that's my prediction, that it's going to be a very confusing year for a lot of people. A holy what the fuck year, basically. More people going into polarity, depression. do you think, Dale? Yes, I, I think more people are just going to get, I'd say, blue balls. They're going to get so, like, just annoyed and there's just going to be a buildup of anger and, and just, yeah, like I said before, depression. People are going to go into depression because the, what's the system showing you? It's just showing you shit. It's just lying to you all the time. And everyone can see the lies as well. Yeah, planetary nervous system fit. <laughs> yes. It comes. Parasympathetic overload. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I want to add that what I shared was my world ball view. But I also okay. have my personal balls which I Go on. place and they live inside of my heart. So during this 2024, kind of like with what RC was saying, it's going to be all about me, <laughs> you know, me and the ones I love and having fun and spending time and just doing things that are just simple, joyful activities. Well, we balance this, what we're doing here right now. Yeah, totally. Nice. Out create it. Out create the shit show. Yeah, the, the world balls yeah. think it's got such big cojones. <laughs> <laughs> we have, Tina, Tina was saying something about um, tunnels in New York. Something so else that came out. That, that's why I never watch the news. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I, yeah, I've no yeah, I've idea. Got... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It could be tunnels to nowhere, though, couldn't it? We don't know what that is. Yeah, I'll have to and research how, how that. relevant it is. Is it is it relevant to our growth? Oh, that's no, nice. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like it's like so. It's like okay, the UFO okay. show we did last year, and it got to the point where we're asking questions. And I just felt like there was no value in the questions I was asking because all it was was instant gratification questions. And at the start, they filled me with like, yeah, this is fun. But after a while, I was just like, holy fuck, we're just spitballing questions to Andrew here about what's this alien? What's this? What's that? Um, and this is it's so important to step away from instant gratification. Turn the telly off. Don't get obsessed with um, Trump or don't get obsessed with conspiracy because it will take you down that route of darkness. And so many times we see it time and time again, people going back to sleep, conspiracy, then coming back to watch this show because they get depressed. So they're like, oh shit, these conspiracies and all this shit's not helping, right? I'll go listen to Andrew and look back at his stuff again to feel good again and start that self-healing journey. So we even see it like with show numbers as well, people coming in and out, more people mm -hmm. viewing, less people viewing. And it's just a cycle we need to get out of. Yeah. I think what's relevant is what's our contribution and service to light, really, isn't it? And that might bring us on to, you know, the, the businesses that are, that we're all doing now. 
you know. So, Arcee, can you tell us about what Quiet Mind is and what you're doing? No, it's very, very hush hush. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the irony keep quiet yes. well, we don't even think about it <laughs> uh, so actually I just bought the Lu Lucia light is that how you pronounce it either Lucia or Lucia yeah yeah, um, yeah. So, so I'm waiting to get that um, I am looking and I know Dale you asked earlier um, opening a healing center here in Charlottesville um, where it will um, I will have um, the Lucia light uh, the chakra light and I do my own hands-on healing modality uh, so um, and maybe um, a couple of other equipments mm -hmm. and um, hopefully be able to invite Mr. Sean down here at some point to bring to come down with his equipment and hold some classes and some sessions too that will be wonderful and of course you guys should you want to come this way i think that is planned at some stage oh very good yeah that sounds really exciting yes i love how this is so fifth world and we're really just mixing up our nations right now mm -hmm. like how we're like doing things in other countries Yes. Lovely. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool, Arthur. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited and looking forward to finding the right place. Beautiful. How do you see how do you see the future of doing healing, R C? How do you see it moving? I I feel just like as we talked about, as um, Dale was saying, we think more and more people are going to be depressed, more and more people are going to be lost. As if you haven't found your footing yet uh, with the solar flares and everything around the world, our countries, the whole world that's happening, more and more people will continue, will have it difficult to find their footing. So I think that each and every person here, uh, our listeners can all contribute uh, to, to healing one another. I think uh, healing centers are going to be many. And, and that's it. And I just want to say here that one of the most important things for growth is coming together with other people allowing co-creation to happen and this is one of the main things i feel which allows people to grow is communicating being part of a team getting people to work with you as well and that's the biggest growth for me is having these amazing people around me as part of my team because for so long i did it by myself i did events ceremonies trainings on my own and meeting andrew meeting laura and so on um, has completely grown me and realized that this change, we have to work together in this change coming up. We have to allow these healing centers to come together as well and not be in competition with each other. See ourselves. Look, I'm so inspiring for you, Sean, Arcee, Laura, everyone, setting up their own little bubbles of healing centers, realities. And a lot of people get so obsessed about competition and, and all of this shit. It's like it's equal co-creation. And that's what's going to change this planet is all of us coming together like shows like this, spreading each other's work and so on. Um, so, yeah, that's just something I wanted to add there. Yeah, cooperation, not competition, absolutely. Yes, yes. That's right. Supporting each other. There there are so many people that click with so, some another, a different kind of healer, a different kind of person. Mm -hmm. So we're, we, we're not we, all healers for the same one person. <laughs> <laughs> and like Andrew said, we need a billion healers in the awakening. Yes. Oh, I like this in the chat. I love this. Could it be a norm for everyone to have an, a healing modality as a side, a side jig? Gig. Gig. So I'll yeah. take a stab at that one. Um, yeah. So not, not everyone at the moment that some people aren't meant to be healers. And that's a fortunate truth and something Andrew is, is uh, explained to me time and time again that a lot of people are meant to be healers but some people are just meant to not be healers and just to work working the system so 
I don't think everyone is not, is meant to have a healing modality, but those who are contracted and want to step forward will. And there's yeah. loads of people out there who are a, who are in the system who are meant to be healers. They're meant to have a business. They're meant to have a practice, but they're still stuck in the slave system. I should think everybody, because we all have the this DNA, has got the potential in them to be a healer, but. You know, many people have chosen this as a lifetime out where they're not going to do anything like that at all. They're not going to do anything spiritual. They're just here to resolve their karma or to just to live a life out of it for yeah. the time being. That's, it yeah. Is, there's a myriad of ways to just be a healer in this world from mm -hmm. a different perspective. Just like yeah. running into someone at the beach to a good conversation can be insanely yeah. healing. Someone who's just not tapped in to something that you're completely tapped in yourself. So you can just bridge that gap. Yes. Yep. And there's people as well that aren't, you, I don't see, you know, as particularly spiritual at all and, and are doing things totally in their unawareness, but are doing really good things. Help it, helping right. other people heal, and they don't even recognize that just the, just by being who they are, they're doing that. Example would be a, a deep tissue specialist who's incredible, who doesn't realize what they're doing, and they're actually healing and helping so many people. They've got five, six clients a day, and they've been doing it for 20 years. Just imagine how many people they've helped and healed. Um, it's, it's really, really inspiring, some people out there, and the discipline they have, and that's something we have to learn is discipline, that things and building our own communities or businesses takes time. It takes effort. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take years and years of practice of building it up slowly to actually have a successful practice. And so many people fail because they come in, light worker salad. I'm asking Archangel Michael's cousin to please help me find clients and give me the money so I can open this center and nothing happens. Archangel Michael's just looking and laughing at you with a cigarette, just like, ah. <laughs> Sean, tell us something about what it took to set up your business mm. and what it's you all, do. It all started with a dream. <laughs> you know, I figure this, figure this shit out and figure out the steps on how to start accomplishing it. And again, it again, it all, a lot of it started with the very first Andrew call where he's like, you could have your own healing center started going through the shit. And I'm like, nah, yeah. I'm <laughs> cool yeah. with my cat. I'm just going to chill on my cat in this cabin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, but like all these ideas got planted into my mind where I could see my future potentials and I could, they were placed in a way that I could actually believe in them and grasp them. And I had the steps that I had to do to move into my own dream and like become my dream. And so then just off to school. And after that, just start doing the planning, <laughs> you know, some business courses, see what, start talking with other business people of what it actually takes to run a business, what kind of spiritual endurance it takes to run a business to see if you'll actually like running the business. If you'll enjoy, if you enjoy it, because if you don't enjoy it, business is not going to be for you because <laughs> like, business is draining. And by draining, I mean, it takes up a large amount of your resources to run a business, but eventually that gets tapped into your whole personality. And if you get joy out of it, it feeds back into you, but businesses are hard. They're a lot of work. And as you start doing things one by one by one, and something I recommend to everybody is that you don't have to do everything all at once. Like it's so easy to just try to pull everything off in three months and learn how to do 10, 20 different things all at once. But if you start little by little and start building it, it can take a lot of the load off. That's one of the big things I recommend. I think a key thing there is you you have invested in your own training. Yeah, that's huge. I, I recommend that to so many people because yeah. you can get into spirituality like like we have. And a lot of us have done things the hard way, mm -hmm. but you can actually get training for a lot of licensed, especially people of all ages. But anyone who's thinking about schooling or wants to go back to school, 
you can get training that's recognized by the government or the system of domination and control. <laughs> and it's already plugged into the social network. Mm -hmm. So you can just immediately have a share of 90% of people's attention, but still do the spiritual work with them and incorporate your own soul spark into the healings. Mm -hmm. And it just, it can be make things so much easier, but so many of us love doing things the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I will claim that as my rites of passage. <laughs> it's, it's true. And I think it gets easier for as the generations go on, it, it gets a little easier and easier. But but that is my advice that learn some people have gone through the rites of passage to do things the hard way. And it can be easier. It really can. But there is no right or wrong way. That's that's for certain. No, that's so true. That is so true, Sean. There isn't. It's just the way that you're going to choose to do it, isn't it? But if well, there is help out there, then take the help as well, like you're saying. Well, yes, yes. And, and Laura, like, what is the scale and size of the faith that you need mm -hmm. to, be kind of, to begin a spiritual venture that has no conventional backing behind it? Absolutely. It's about your own intuition, but your own belief in yourself too. And having that belief. And, and how, how many doubts creeped in over time? Like how during does, the process. Yeah, did you like say it, doubt? Yeah, like when you have a giant yeah. faith uh, experiment happening and the duration and time that it takes how many little doubts creep in or try to creep in to, to stop that big dream that, that takes a lot of hard work from happening. Yeah. That's where you want that, that me. self. Yeah. It's true. Us, isn't it? And that's where you want that self presence and that, that self belief. And I remember saying to myself, like it, even just launching my website, which looking back was no big thing, but boy, did I make it a big thing at the time. Did I know about it the wrong way and everything else and, and not always listen to the advice, but hey, that is that is just the way it went. But I kept saying to myself, what have I got to lose? You know, what have I got to lose by doing this? I've, I'm only going to gain. And I didn't necessarily mean financially although you can't shy away from that of course you're here to make money because you want to expand your business and because money is energy and you want that equal energy exchange that's what we've learned isn't it that money is energy and you should have equal energy exchange you should be rewarded for what you do that it's the light worker misnomer that you have to give everything for free and then be in poverty yourself. What good does that do? You do have to value yourself, and being paid is one one of those ways. But I was, I, I did, I, I just got to the stage. I was like, look, I've got nothing to lose, and everything to gain by stepping up and doing this, and finding that source connection and faith and knowing that you back yourself and you it's going to be okay and those times will come where you have doubt and all the hesitation will come up but that source connection and that remembrance will bring you back into that vision again and that will pass and everything will align again and this is the thing what happens with me like start of the year it's like right it's um january time right now i need to actually get on with this year <laughs> so you have that moment where you're, you're manifesting you're starting again then but a few days into january i'm like yes it's 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 i'm here again bitch <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm allowing this just full trust and faith and like funness and backing myself um i think that's so important for me anyway and my growth has come with source connection and that unlimited faith that mm. i will be okay each month after month i'll be fine and there'll be a way, but I have to make my way. I'm not going to allow spirit just to give me everything because it won't. I've got it to manifest. Happen. I've got to do the shows. I've got to do the combine. I've got to create new courses and all sorts of different things in between. And this is what we want to inspire people to do. Create your own shit. What makes you different than anybody else? And that's something you have to do in business. How can you market yourself in a niche way where you don't sound like everyone else? 
And there's so many infinite ways to do that. And we've been playing around, like I've been playing, I'm changing the my uh, treatments from psychic surgery to a different name. We've had lots of fun talking about other <laughs> names and how names can pigeonhole you into one category and stuff. <laughs> so if anyone's got any ideas, put them in the chat. <laughs> because all the ones Dale come up with, Andrew and I dissed. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the, isn't it a hard thing to, to pitch something that doesn't exist really? Like, like it's, it. I mean, like, like the PEMF, it's just how do you teach something that no one, like you have to sell something to someone that no one knows what it is really. <laughs> and it has no framework or it does, but no one knows about it. And that, that can be hard. That, that's a challenge. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, at least that with the, are you talking about the PEMF mats? Just as PMF. an example, yeah. just like, yes. It's like you're trying to sell something and I'd say 95, 90, 98% of the people going by have no clue what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to explain it to them and sell it to them. Yeah. That's the challenge, isn't it? Yeah. Sales, <laughs> hair removals, honestly. <laughs> Get rid of all the fuzzies and knots. <laughs> without cutting them <laughs> yes <laughs> for but those of you who can't see the chat it says da Andrew's put in Dale's hair removal system so that's your <laughs> new name Dale <laughs> that's what you do <laughs> and people come weekly for it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's good what Tina's put the name focuses on the result yeah what is the end result? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Complete healing. But it's just, you don't want a boring name either. You want something that really, that really pulls people in. Yeah. It's a like tiny bit solid. Part. Go on, like, Sean. Like, well, just like when eventually, like when you get to a certain level of mastery and you come to the point where you have to make your own school almost, like kind of <laughs> like role thing and cranial sacral therapy. Like those were all nothing at one time. And yeah. then someone had to create it and then sell it and sell it yeah. hard. And now it's actually a real thing now. If you know Absolutely. what I mean by real thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's accepted. Like even the past life regression is quite accepted by a lot of social groups now too. Yeah. I, I remember that. I went to the so I, I've done only cranio sacral level one. I remember asking loads of people, I was like, how did you hear about this? Like, I re I'm really interested. How the fuck have you heard about this? Like, word of mouth, word of mouth, most of word of mouth. Like, and I remember that time where Andrew talked about and I researched it. I'm like, holy shit, this is just fucking incredible stuff. And it's how you market it to people. And Sean, I've, I've gone through your website and how you marketed the mat. It's, you've done a really good job. You've mm. really, really good job how you've explained and talked for those people who don't know anything about it, how you can sell it to them, but knowing that they receive an incredible product. And then the next part, then you got to get them on the website. <laughs> so again, you can have the most amazing service in the world. Like you could have the, the cure for everything, but if no one knows about it, like <laughs> you'll never get like union hall zero, zero, zero. I always <laughs> think about those fucking billboards up that people are driving by. And it's like, if people don't know about it, they'll never sign up for the experience. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, Arcee, can you, I don't know anything about chakra lights. Tell me about chakra lights. I don't know about those. Oh, yeah. It's an awesome, um, it's called a crystal bed. But when I say crystal bed, people think that the bed is actually crystal. But it's not. You lie on a massage bed. And the crystals are above you. There is seven crystals in the color of the, your chakras. They're vo cut vogel shape, which pinpoints exactly to your uh, where the chakras are. And I you know you you can move them around. You know somebody's tall, somebody's short. Um, so you lie under it. Um, I, I I I cover their eyes. Um, I open sacred space. I drum usually at the beginning. 
and um, and I walk away and I let them experience uh, experience the lights so you've got the vocal crystals you've got the color therapy you've got the crystal therapy um they have music um it's really uh i've had people who would never use it use it and wake up and say i got a clear message i need to do x y and z next mm -hmm. so many people uh you know i i tell them have one particular question on your mind one intention on your mind and 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 you're good and you know people can feel their chakras it uh opens your chakras up it takes all the gunk off i i call it you know the fog the fog the life all the stress all the life we've been through it just gathers around our chakra and so we clarity really is um comes from our chakras being clear mm -hmm. being open being activated um so when you leave the bed your chakras have been cleared they've been activated and then of course i always close them so you can own you are a you open it when you're sitting and you're meditating or when you're sitting and meditating it at opens up and then once you're done it will close again mm -hmm. so and you're going to use this with the with the lucia light as well separately right Se separately okay separately, yeah, yeah. yeah separately they they can use it uh, at different um, you know you, they can do one first and then the other okay I've so many i've had many questions answered by laying in uh, on this crystal bed mm -hmm. yeah it's it's Pretty awesome nice and then people who are very sensitive they know they can feel their chakras what's going on around their third eye or in or all of the chakras uh they can feel the energy moving yeah that will be good um doing that with a meditation yes do you think mm. absolutely mm. absolutely mm. i try to make sure uh, even though a lot, many times i do fall asleep and so do my clients um when i'm doing it i try to make sure i'm doing it when i'm not really really tired because i want to be alert <laughs> to what's even though i want i'm relaxed i still want to stay aware of what's going on and get the messages mm. so sounds yeah. really good yeah yeah. And what yeah. else you're doing that the Lucia light you'll be doing and something else did you say? I do my own hands-on healing. Okay. Um, I've, I've studied a different modalities. Um so I'm a master uh it's called uh integrated energy therapy. Mm -hmm. And I've studied Reiki, but during the years of doing healing on people I would just get hits that I need to do this, I need to do that. So after a while, it just turned into its own modality. So there are certain things that I always do. And then, but most of when I'm doing hands-on healing, most of it is just for that particular person of what they would need. They might come in because they have a headache and then i'm working on their heart and I, I i don't even go near their head so it's i have to stay aware and listen to where i'm being guided on what to do for that person so it's always mm. different i love it yeah to the needs of the moment yes and their, and their body wisdom mm. yes yes the the connection be, between what's being put through me for for that person 
And what do you say it takes to get in, into th- this sort of position? I mean, you've been able to buy a Lucia light, which is amazing. Um, you, you've obviously done, you know, a lot of this now, the chakra healing and so on. What d- what did it take, RC, for you to put yourself out there? You know, the biggest obstacle was self doubt. Honestly, if you if had I dropped self doubt way earlier, uh, you know. It, it would things would have been different but once you drop self-doubt self-judgment uh just a whole new world opens up for you and i'm not saying that as you're moving forward there are not um any questions any doubts that come in should i do this should i do that should i go this way should i go that way those questions are normal so there is that self-talk of is this self-doubt is this a logical way of looking at it you know you you want a fine balance dale always talks about balancing so and and that's what i think one of the things your uh psychic surgeries do right yes allowing yourself to learn a framework learn a system but then start creating your own system within I'd say like an orchestra of sound and being able to connect to that sound, knowing that each client is has its unique energies of the session. And every single session, I never go in with expectation or a plan of what I'm going to do because I've learned to read the energies of the now, um, reading their ancestral line, the, the energies of the grandmothers and grandfather. It's like every single session now is just about tuning in and reading the energies of the session. And I remember years ago, um, I had a session with someone and Andrew came on and we were doing a session together and there was some stuff I was I was saying and then I, I was about to say that Andrew said, and afterwards I was like, everything you're saying, I was picking up and he goes, because you finally accepted the healing energies of the session and that you are able to actually tune into them just like that and what's needed in the moment for that person. Uh, so it's innately more and more you practice these skills of energy healing or whatever you're doing there comes a time where it's just a knowingness and it's just turning on that joy, turning on that love uh, and you become the grand master and the the amount of hours and hours I've done of sessions, uh, it's got to that level and everyone can get there as well. It's just about trust, practice, practice, practice. Um, And yeah, just knowing that you are valuable, knowing that you can like reading people, for instance, people find it so hard to read people, but I find it quite easy because I've learned that it is easy. It's just about trust and faith. <laughs> and what you're saying, the first things which come to mind are right. And loads of people doubt themselves. And uh, so it's about getting people just back to that, the, the, the small steps of trust, faith, who you are as a person, and so on. And not trying to be someone else. A lot of people try and be some of a healer or of a teacher, finding your own way. Um, and obviously, we're lucky enough to have Andrew as an elder and as a teacher of someone we can obviously find information, uh, learn from his teachings as well. So we do need teachers out there as well uh, to learn from. Mm. Absolutely. We're always learning, aren't we? Always on that learning path. Yes. It's, it's wild. After a while, like the nervous system, like when it comes to the doubts, like you try to plan something that's going to take X amount of time whether it takes a week to do or a month to do or a year to do. And then you can start to hear it talking and it always just tries to derail you from what you're trying to accomplish. Like, Oh no, I don't really like that so much. Or maybe I should be doing this. And you can actually start to identify that voice in your head. That's your own nerves. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's just like you. It's just a bunch of vines. But it's there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to know yeah. what to say, be quiet too. Mm. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. Which part of you, you can say, nope, you need to be quiet, to put it politely. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. The, like, the thing that we learned in the mentorship, just the uh, send them on a field trip. Or like, <laughs> 
task them to do something. Like my favorite ones lately is, hey, I got you. Uh, 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 uh. No way in hell that we're doing that. And now I'm going to task you to start counting my blessings for the day. Yes. Right? Yes. Re retasking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Retasking. Yeah. No longer a doubt finder. You're a, you're a blessing counter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's brilliant. I always sort of say like, you know, I'm here. My I am presence is in charge. You are a sympathetic. I'm in charge. My authentic sovereign self. I'm going to make the decisions. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> I am the soul. You fucking up. Fuck you. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That is practice. <laughs> that is practice. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> so, guys, we're coming to the end of the show. And um, what a great show and a way to start this 2024. So we're going to go around. How can people get hold of you, Laura Massey, for sessions and to receive some of your wisdom? Um, look on my website. I've revamped it completely. So um, there's still two feathers medicine.com and you'll find um, some buttons there for um, one session or a course um, of self empowerment through shama shamanic practices. And um, next week, next couple of weeks, I'm in York with Andrew and Dale on our combined therapies healing. We're fully booked, which is going to be very exciting some guys coming over from the states and someone from australia even so and guys from the uk so that is going to be fabulous um yeah so you can also email me laura two feathers at gmail.com that's with the number two so thanks for a great show guys thank you laura sean all right if anyone wants a like a physical session they can come to the beaches in toronto canada i'm thinking like looking into doing online sessions in the future but you can get a hold of me at myinfinitehealth.ca beautiful my brother thanks for coming on sean rc um you can get a hold of me rc Baron uh, uh, on Facebook or quietmind.us on Facebook. And my website is quietmind.us as well. Beautiful. Thank you. And Thank so you. currently at the moment, if you'd like to learn past life regression, I am doing past life regression training, which includes free personal past life regression training sessions. So if you want to learn to be a past life regression practitioner, learn how past lives affect this present lifetime as well there will also be future life training as well so that's available throughout january and february i'm doing it in groups of two so if you're interested um drop me an email or drop me a message and i will send all the details out i believe they're on my page daletobin.com so go over there for more details also we have a boot camp product as well available on the site andrewbartsis.com so if you're stuck in any way and you're wanting to learn the basics of spirituality, discipline and hygiene, head over and click the, and the scan the QR code just at the top here. And we have the boot camp product part one. I do believe part two will be coming out very soon as well. We also have the light language products available. So if you're wanting to learn more about light language skills, uh, that's available for you as well. Just on the QR code there. I'd like to say thank you for everyone and for those listening. And here we go, guys, 2024. Let's do it. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone.